Gospel of John, chapter 3. Now, I'm going to do something different. Okay, we'll see how this goes. I want to encourage you, when you come to Bible study, to bring a notebook and a pen, or paper, pencil, or pen. Because I think what's happening is, as I'm teaching, we're just kind of reading along together. Okay, and I think it might be more, more beneficial for us to write down notes of what's being taught will help you to remember it better than just us reading an outline together, okay? Uh, I'm basically giving you my full outline. I probably need to uh, hand out just kind of a skeleton outline and give you space to, to write notes, okay? So that's why we do not have any for you tonight. We're going to try to do something a little bit different to help you to be able to retain uh, what is taught better. Okay, and that would be to your advantage. Don't just leave it when you leave here. Whatever notes you take, okay, go home and read them. Okay, it's something that we learned uh, when I was in seminary. They taught us to take notes because you're receiving the information. And then we would have to go type those notes up, which means you have to read it again in order to type it, and then you add a hard copy of it. Now, without asking anybody to type anything, okay? <laughs> but it will help you if you write it down. It helps you to retain. Yeah. Okay, just, just, uh, okay, so that's what we're going to be doing from now on. Okay, I want to make some announcements concerning uh, our Easter service. Okay, it's going to be, of course, this coming Sunday, 1.30, and then again at 7 p.m. after the 7 p.m., service we will have a potluck okay now people are going to come you know it's kind of it's kind of rude to show up at the end of the service just to eat that's not really appropriate <laughs> and i've had people do that okay. okay that's not really uh we want to be a blessing to people but the main thing is coming to hear about jesus Amen. Amen. okay Amen. that's the main thing and so let people know hey come to service and afterward, we'll have something to eat. Okay? And so that'll be this Sunday, 1.30. We'll have a regular service. No potluck after the morning, the afternoon service. Okay? We don't have time. We'll have it again at 7, another service. We'll have the potluck after that. Okay? So I want to encourage you to join us this week in doing some extra inviting. Yeah. Okay, Sister uh, Wright. She's always a blessing. We appreciate Sister Wright. She's made some pamphlets up. And there are some back there on the guest book table. Each little envelope has 10. So don't take more than you're going to use. Just figure out how many you think you'll use. Okay, let your neighbors know. Okay, let your friends know. Give them an invite. Okay, and if you want to uh, join us tomorrow, we'll re meet here, uh, let's say 3 o'clock. Okay, we're going to go out. And we're going to continue to invite in this neighborhood, but we will be using some of those pamphlets, letting people know about the Easter service. Okay. Pastor, you said invite my neighbors. Okay. I had a neighbor come. That's right. Okay. Yeah. And and uh, that's a close invite. You just walk across the yard or across the street. Okay. You're right there. Uh, and invite people. Let people know. Okay. Now, we, we mentioned these things and... and we don't, we don't expect you to do anything that we don't do. Okay. Now, I've been out inviting. Uh, so we got back from conference on late Saturday. I went on Saturday and Sunday. I, I went um, yesterday. I saw Sister Wright at Walmart. I was there inviting people. Okay. Met a couple that was in the Army. And the guy said, I'm going to put the buggy up. I said, you're from the South somewhere. He said, yeah, I lived in Georgia. I said, I used to live in Hinesville. He said, that's where I'm stationed. So we got to talk, and, and they uh, received an invitation. The reason I'm telling you this is, you know, we do it. We don't just tell you to do it. We don't want to be like the Pharisees in the Bible that told people to do all this stuff, and they wouldn't lift one finger to do it. That's not right. So anything that we encourage you to do, we do it also. Okay? So join us. Okay, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a challenge before this church. Okay, one month from uh, 
this past Sunday. Let's go one month from this past Sunday. And that's not a that's not a normal. You know, we came in from out of town. People were out of town. Our morning service was a little bit down, but we did have um, a new visitor. Okay, Kimmy's mom came. Yeah. But we want to try to double our attendance. Amen. In one month. We can do it. We can do it. Amen. Okay, so we've been averaging maybe about what, 14, 15, Brother Collins on a normal Sunday afternoon service. Let's try to get 30 before, okay, before, let's say May, the, what's the date? Today is the 12th. 12th. Let's, let's say uh, May the 15th. I don't know, whatever the next Sunday is, closer okay. to that. Okay, let's try to get 30 people in church on a Sunday Amen. afternoon. I think Amen. we can do it. Amen. 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 Yeah, absolutely. We may do it Sunday, this Sunday, Easter. Yeah. But if we do, let's do it again. That's right. Amen. <laughs> we can do it once, we can do it twice. Yes. Amen. If a pastor, why, why are you promoting all this? Unless God's purpose, God's for the church being here upon the earth, is to, to be a tool in the hand of God to reach people, not just to keep this good news, this gospel to ourselves, but to spread this gospel. Okay? And we all have a part to play in it, and, and we need your help. Amen. Okay, so after service, we'll clean up a little bit, grab some pamphlets on your way out, okay, and help us as we reach out to the community. And Easter's a really good time to get people to come uh, that may not come at other times, okay, because uh, people know that that's a special day, and, and uh, we're going to come and, and celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and... Uh, look to the Lord in prayer. We'll ask his blessing over this Bible study uh, tonight. And Brother Collins, sir, would you pray, please? Father God, we look forward to what you have for us tonight, God. And we come to you with open hearts. And we ask that you bless the pastor and give him the words to speak. And, uh, and help him with his teaching tonight. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And so we talk about Jesus speaking to this man by the name of Nicodemus in our last Bible study. And he said to him that he must be born again. Okay, now being born again, as we shared, it's not a denomination. It's not like someone being a Methodist or a Catholic or a Baptist or a Lutheran. Okay, but being born again is an experience that takes place in the lives of men and women who repent of their sin and put their faith in Jesus. When we accept him into our hearts as our Lord and Savior, he comes in and he changes us. Amen? Amen. And we are a new creature as the Bible teaches you and I. So it is an experience okay, to those that it takes place into those lives that are those that are saved. Okay? Nicodemus was thinking about a natural birth. But Jesus was speaking to him about a spiritual birth from God. Okay, a heavenly birth. They're two different things. Okay, we, we may not understand how the spiritual birth takes place, but we can see the effects of it. We can see people, we can see in our own lives that there was a change. Yes. Something was different. Okay, God made or had an effect on our lives. Okay, yeah. He changed things. Amen. Okay, so we see it. And we, Jesus gave us the example there of the wind blowing. Okay, now I think it's a good, right on time tonight, isn't it? The wind yeah. blowing through the window. <laughs> now we don't see the wind blowing through the window. But we feel it. But we feel it, don't we? Amen. Okay, so we feel it. We see, uh, though we do not know where it originates, when we cannot physically see it, we can feel and see the effects of it. Okay, we can see the effects of it. So we go to verse 9. This is where we're going to begin tonight. Okay, Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Are thou a master of Israel and knoweth not these things? So Nicodemus still didn't understand, okay, though. He was a teacher uh, in the Jewish religion. Okay? Like many today, even though he was involved in religion, he did not understand Jesus' teaching about being born again. And there are many of that in this way. 
Okay, they, they have maybe the mindset, if I do all of these good works, then God is going to accept me because of the good things that I've done. Okay, it doesn't work that way. If I keep all these religious rituals, then God is going to accept me. Brother sister, uh, no man is going to come to the Father, as Jesus told Nicodemus, he's not going to see God unless he is born again. God's not looking for our own works. He's not looking for you and I to earn our way into heaven because you'll never do it. None of us. Okay? It doesn't take care of the sin issue. He's looking for us to submit ourselves to him in faith, to allow him to come into our lives and wash that sin away and change us. That's what being born again is all about. Letting God change us from the inside out. Okay? He washes the sin away. He takes it out of our hearts and out of our lives. But we don't even want to do it anymore. Okay, now I've personally known people who uh, were alcoholics, people who were addicted to uh, cigarettes, even drugs. Okay, and they submitted themselves to Christ. They put their faith in the Lord and given their heart to him. And he instantly took the desire for those things out of their lives. Okay? You know, one man, he smoked for probably over 40 years, two, maybe three packs a day. But when he surrendered to Jesus, that desire for nicotine was instantly taken out of his body. He didn't have to go get patches and nicotine gum and do all of these things. Okay? God took that desire and that addiction away from him. Okay? What about cursing? People get saved instantly. God takes that cursing away, takes it out of the mouth. That, that bitter water is no longer there. Okay? God puts some sweet water in there, doesn't he? Amen. And because you have the goodness of the Lord in you, when you speak, that's what's come. That what that is what comes out. Okay, even if something surprises you, or even if something disturbs you, instead of cursing the Lord, we may say something like, "Oh, sweet Jesus, help me." Isn't that amazing that God does that? All right. Okay, that's that's the way that God works, brother and sister. The person is changed from the inside out. Okay, let's go to verse eleven now. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and you receive not our witness. If I had told you earthly things, and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you heavenly things? So Jesus was, was telling him, Nicodemus, you know, I'm, I'm even giving you natural examples, and you're not believing that. How are you going to believe if I tell you about I'm telling you about these spiritual things. You know, brother, sister, you know, we, we believe God for, uh, uh, we we're talking about the situation. Uh, uh, Arlene and I were talking about Ukraine, and she said, what should we do? And I said, well, we have to pray for those people. And, and you know, God is able to answer prayer, and God already has. Yes. Okay, now we're not uh, trying to be political or anything like that, okay, but... You have this small country that's being attacked by this much larger country. And they are literally, uh, they attacked their capital or tried to, and the Ukrainians beat them back. That's right. People are like, what's going on here? People are praying. Amen. People are looking to God. Okay? Mm -hmm. and, and there may be other things involved. We're not trying to get into all of that tonight. But if, if God can do that, and he can, God can do something in the natural cause one people be, to be able to defend themselves against a, a greater uh, group of people. And we see that all through the Bible. Okay? You want David and Goliath? Was Goliath bigger than David? Yes, he was. Okay? David walked with God. Okay? He looked to God to help him. That's what we do when we pray. If God can help us in natural things, can't God help us in spiritual things? Yes. You know, I can pray and God could help protect a group of people. Can't I pray 
And God changed something within my heart and my soul? Yes. Huh? I don't know how to stop being, to, to stop uh, having this anger. I don't know how to stop this bitterness that I have towards this person because they did me wrong. Well, let me tell you how. Pray to the Lord Jesus Christ and tell him to take that out of your heart. The same God that can answer prayer about natural things and does natural things. How do you think this ball of dirt that we're living on keeps going in the correct orbit? Okay? All right. does, the, does, the, does the gravity fail and like all oh, the people in Australia fell off the earth because they're down on the bottom? <laughs> There's a glitch in the gravity. God fell asleep at the switch, and they all fell off. It doesn't do that. That's right. God keeps everything in order, doesn't he? If God can do that with the universe, can he help you and I with our lives? He can, and he does. Yeah, but we have to seek him. We have to seek him, and we have to trust him, and we have to obey him. Okay, we have to be willing to surrender our life and give him our heart. Here's my life, Lord. Fix it. Help me. And he will. Okay, so we go on out of verse 13. And uh, let's read there. No man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. So Nicodemus had previously acknowledged that Jesus came from God. He said, you are a teacher, come from God. And here Jesus is upon the earth. Speaking to Nicodemus in the natural, but Jesus is also still God the Son. Just because he was made a man and lived upon the earth, that did not diminish his divinity. Okay, he's still very much God. Okay, and, and sometimes people forget that or they don't realize that. Okay, Nicodemus, you're not just talking to some rabbi or some prophet, or some teacher, okay, you are talking to God. Yes. Yeah. Okay? And God is talking to you. Okay? So, uh, Jesus, is though he is, though he was made um, uh, a man and, and lived in natural flesh, he's still the Son of God, just as those who are born again, okay, we see a dual nature in Christ, and we also see it in those that are born again. Yes, you're a human being, but don't say, oh, well, I'm only human. If you're saved, you, you are not only human. If you are saved, you are a human being with God living in you. That's right. Okay? You're like Jesus. Okay? You're a human being, and you have God in you. Wow. Okay? That's amazing, isn't it? Okay? We became, he became a man to pay for our sin, but he's still the Son of God. He is omnipresent, and that word means ever-present. That's why he could say, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll go with you always, even to the end of the world. Okay? So he's with you at home. He's with you at work. Okay? He's with you through every trial and tribulation that you face. Okay? He's always present. And he's not only with you, he's with every other believer, wherever they are. That's how awesome God is. Brother and sister, he is here with us tonight. Yes. Okay, but he's also with other Christians. They're having a Bible study eh, in a few minutes uh, in Graham. He's going to be there. That's right. How can God do that? Because he's God. <laughs> See, we're the ones that are limited by the physical right now. Like one of these days is not going to be that way. Okay. That's how God is able to rapture the whole church because this corruptible is going to put on incorruption and you're going to be changed and you're not going to be limited by the natural things upon this earth. That's why now we see through a glass darkly. We have somewhat of an understanding, but you're going to see God face to face and you're going to know, your brain is going to be able to comprehend the way that God knows everything about you. Isn't that going to be amazing? Yes. Huh? Yes. I wish God would show me more. We may not be able to handle more right now <laughs> in our limited uh, uh, thinking. 
Okay, but one of these days, God's going to change us. Okay, when he raptures us and takes us home, and he's going to give us the, the ability to understand more, and you're going to. Okay, so just trust God. Okay, so he came as a man to pay for our sin. He is here with us. He's also with other believers around the world. He was upon the earth, but he still had his place as the son of God. He did not lose his place as the son of God. Though he became man, he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation. The Bible said he humbled himself, okay? He humbled himself unto death, even the death of the cross. So Ephesians 2 and 1, let's look at some scripture that goes along with this. And you hath he quickened, made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the courts of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom we all had our conversation in time past, and the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the, desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as others. But, we're changing it now. It's a small word, but it has a big meaning. It's not that way anymore. You're no longer children of wrath. We're no longer disobedient. We shouldn't be. We can obey God. You need to tell me I got God living in me and I can't obey God? I can't obey God. All right. You need to tell me all of the universe obeys God? I can't obey God. He can't help me to obey Him. He can. Okay? All right, let's go on here. Verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, for His great love wherewith He loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. Pastor, I'm sitting in the church down here in Tucson. Well, you are also seated in heavenly places in Christ. Thank you, Lord. He's already gone. Now, this is his word. Go to John chapter 14. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, ye may be also. Did he say that? He said, if it were not so, I would have told you. You know, you were, you're saved. You've already got a mansion waiting on you in glory. Right. People, people want to pursue things here upon this earth. And I, and I hope you have a nice place. But let's not put that stuff before God up. Okay. You already got a mansion. It's already paid for. Pastor, I like that. <laughs> no mortgage. Okay. Amen. You don't have to pay taxes on it either. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. He's got it prepared for you. John 1 and 18. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, has declared him. Okay. So Jesus. Though he came to declare the Father, showed us what the Father is like, he's still in the bosom of the Father. Let's go to verse 14 now, okay? And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so, the Son of Man must be lifted up. So now Jesus tells Nicodemus, now remember, Nicodemus was a teacher of the Jewish people. He was supposed to know the Word of God. He tells him about this account out of the book of Numbers, chapter 21, okay? He tells them of this Old Testament account that he should have known about and should have understood that it was an example or a typification of Jesus, okay? Numbers chapter 21, verse 9. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole, and it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld a serpent of brass, he lived. So what did this typify? The Bible tells us that Jesus became sin for us. He who knew no sin became sin for us. Do you know that Jesus literally took our sin upon him? And we're talking about Jesus being in the bosom of the Father. And though he was down here upon the earth, he was still God the Son. And that he wasn't separated from God where there came a time when he was. 
Okay, when he died upon the cross, we can read uh, how he, he cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because our sin was placed upon our Savior. Okay? And he, he took, he gave up the ghost, and he descended into hell to pay the price for our sin. And when he did, brother sister, there was a separation between him and the Father. Okay? And then, then once our sin was paid for, what we're going to celebrate this Sunday, he rose from the dead. Okay? We are justified by the, the blood that he shed and the life that he gave to pay for us. And he's alive now. Amen. And he ascended and he's reunited Amen. with God the Father. And he lives forever to make intercession for us. Amen. Okay? But Jesus literally became sin for you and I. All right? Now, you look at this account in the book of Numbers. Okay? The people were being attacked by serpents or snakes. God told Moses, take a staff or a pole. Put a serpent on it. Okay? When people look upon the thing that is afflicting them, they'll live. Jesus wasn't afflicting us. Sin was. Jesus took our sin upon him. Look at your sin being placed upon Jesus, Amen. being paid for, and you can be saved. Yeah. All right. Okay? You can be saved. Okay? He became sin for us. He paid for that sin. John 8 and 28. Then said Jesus unto them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father had taught me, I speak these things. John 12 and verse 32. If I be lifted up from the earth, will I, I even I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. This he said, signifying what death he should die. Okay, 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Man, what a trade-off. Here, Jesus, here's my sin. Jesus says, here, saint, here's my righteousness. Trade you. Okay? Philippians 2 and 7. We've already read this. Okay, but we'll read it again. But he made himself an no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. For it became him, death, okay, for whom all things, and by whom all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Okay? So Moses lifted up that serpent, and the people looked upon that in faith, and they were healed. Jesus was lifted up. The sin had been placed upon him. If we look to him, he said, if he be lifted up, he's drawing all men unto him, brother and sister. He's using the church, okay, the Holy Spirit, the Word of God. We have a part to play in this. He's endeavoring to be lifted up so that men and women will look upon him and be saved. We need to lift him up. Okay? Verse 15 through 17. We're almost done. Let's go ahead and finish up tonight. Okay, I've got a couple of minutes here. You mind if I finish up? Finish. Okay, verse 21. Okay, we'll try to get that done uh, tonight. Okay, let's go to, to uh, verse, where am I at here? 15. There you go. Thank you. Okay? Chapter 3, verse 15. That whosoever believeth in him, Okay, and so the Son of Man must, must be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's why he was lifted up upon the cross. Whosoever means, whosoever chooses to believe in him, anyone. Now this does away with this, uh, this, this 
Some are predestined to be saved and some are not. What kind of cruel God would God be? That would be a lie. And there are people that teach that. Well, you know, some people are predestined to be saved and some people are not. So this guy over here, no matter how much he wants to be saved, because he's not predestined to, he can't be. That's contrary to what this says. That's contrary to what the Bible teaches. The predestination that God talks about, number one, he's going to have a church. He predestined, he's going to have a church. Now, people choose to be in it. That's not predestination. Whosoever believe it in him. Okay? That's part of it. The second part of predestination is God predestined that those that are saved will be conformed to the image of his son. No exceptions. Well, I'm a Christian, but I'm not like Jesus. There's something wrong there. You know, the word Christian means Christ-like. Okay? Got to make us like him. Every one of us. All right. Okay? 1 Timothy 2 and 4. Who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. Didn't say just some. said all. Okay? 2 Peter 3 and 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us were, not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. Revelation 22 and 17, and the spirit of the bride say, come, and let him that heareth say, come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, Amen. let him take of the water of life freely. Okay? All right, verse 18 now, back in John chapter 3, and I know I'm moving right along, but we're trying to finish this up for you, okay? He that believeth on me, okay? Excuse me, he that believeth on him, is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. We are to believe to the extent, brothers and sisters, that we repent of sin and put our faith in Jesus and follow him. We must believe that he is the Savior and has the authority to save and forgive. And I've been trying to drive that home lately. Okay, well, I don't know if God forgave me. You're calling God a liar. He said, if you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive your sin and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Don't doubt God. God loves you. God forgave you. All right. Now. All of your good works ain't going to get you one inch closer to God. Now, you do it because you are saved. You do things because you are saved. But you don't do things to be saved. Don't let people come along and put you on a guilt trip and get you to do things because you're a Christian that they should be doing there it is again. Huh? Who raised your kids? You did? But did they raise their own? They did. Yes. Well, I'm not against helping people, but sometimes people need to help themselves. Amen. That's right. Okay? And the Bible teaches that. Okay? And we're going to have a potluck. There are going to be people who show up to eat. Yeah, well. Well, you know, the church is supposed to feed people. No, the church is supposed to preach the gospel to people. Yes. Even Jesus stopped feeding people. He said, you follow me for the fishes and the loaves. You didn't feed them anymore. Apostle mm -hmm. Paul wrote, and he told Timothy, if a man don't work, he shouldn't eat. And I understand that not everyone can. Okay, but there are provisions for that. Okay, let's go back into the Old Testament. And are you familiar with the fact that they would leave uh, uh, crops and stuff in the field for the poor? Yes. Okay, let me ask you a question. Did they go out there and pick it and give it to them, or did the poor people have to come in there and pick it themselves? Poor people have to get it. Go read about Ruth. Ruth, we got some food for you. You got to go out there and get it. Mm -hmm. They left you some, the gleanings. Guess what, Ruth? There it is. Okay? Now, if somebody can't work, okay, we understand that and we help people. But there are a lot of people that take advantage of other people's love and kindness, and they're not helping. You're not helping them. Okay, you're really not helping them. They need to. They need to take. Per What's going to happen when you're gone? Mm -hmm. Who's going to do everything for them? Huh? They ain't got to know how to do it. Okay. You know, my dad told me, 
I was a teenage boy. To go play. I had some money. To go. go cut some yards. Go cut some grass, boy. <laughs> now he, you know, he was my dad. He provided for me, but he wanted to teach me how to work. And when I turned 18, we graduated on Friday, and I wasn't saved. We went out and did that after graduation thing that everybody does. And I came Saturday morning, I came walking in the backyard. My dad was sitting under the shade tree drinking a glass of tea. There he did on Saturday, sitting next to me. He said, what you going to do? I said, what do you mean, Dad? He said, you ain't staying here. <laughs> <laughs> I was gone Monday. Lived in another town. Got a job. Yep. Okay? That's the best thing he ever did for me. Because he taught me. I'm going to push you out of the nest. You're going to have to learn how to fly. I'm not always going to be here to take care of you. You have to learn to take care of yourself. You are not hurting people by expecting them to be responsible for their own life. You are helping them. And I'm not mad at anybody. We love you. <laughs> it's all right. I'm just kidding because I can get uh, fired up sometimes. Okay, anyway, let's go ahead and go on. Are we still good? Yes. Okay. Okay, so... Uh, Verse 19 now. Okay. Just got done with 18. Okay. Verse 19. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Mankind is already condemned because the truth of the light is available to them. And most people reject it and stay in their sin. It's not that God's trying to condemn them. They're condemning themselves by not accepting the truth. That's right. Okay. And they want, that's what they want to do. Huh? That's what most people want to do. They want to do their own thing. They want to continue on in their sin. Well, I would go to church, but I can't. If I do that, I got to stop shacking up. That's right. Stop shacking up. Get married. Well, I don't want to do that. Well, don't blame God. Okay, and God's, you're trying to condemn me, preacher. No, I'm not. God's trying to give you a chance to do what's right. That's right. You say you believe the truth. Well, act upon it. Talk is cheap. I love God. Then start obeying him. That's right. That's what Jesus said. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. <sighs> okay. Verse 20. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Thank God, brother and sister, we can come to the Lord. Amen? And we can absolutely uh, let God work in our hearts and our lives. That ought to be our prayer. God, I just want to do right by you. you know, whatever whatever your word teaches, if that's that's what you tell me, I, I just want to do that. Help me, Lord. Yeah. Amen? If you truly want to do right, we can come to God. He gives us that opportunity, brother and sister. We have that opportunity right now in our lives. He invites us. He says, come unto me. We used this the other night. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yes. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Yes. So we're going to start right there. Verse 21, Lord willing, we'll begin in verse 22, next uh, Bible study. Okay, let's remember Thursday we've got service at 7 p.m. Okay. Again, there's some pamphlets back there. Only take what you're going to use. We have a limited amount. Take what you're going to use. Let your friends know. Let your neighbors know. Let's have a good turnout. Not only Thursday, but let's, let's have a good turnout on Easter Sunday. Let's tell somebody about our resurrected Savior. Amen. He resurrected us. Yes, he did. We sure did. We just read about it. We were dead in trespasses and sins. And he has made us alive. Amen. Amen. And he did it for us. He can do it for them. Amen. 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 God bless you is our prayer. And let's go ahead and dismiss the Bible study tonight. And Brother Ben, will you dismiss us, please, sir? Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for this word that you provided for us, this pastor. Thank you to bless us, thank you to bless this church, those who are here, those who aren't. Lord, we we just we, we praise you. We we thank you for everything that you do for us. We thank you for dying for us, arising from the dead, dying for our sins. 
You're just an awesome job, Lord. There's no, not much more to say. You're just wonderful. You're awesome. You are just, you're so grateful. Continue to bless us as we leave. Bring us back in the next point of time. We thank you, praise you, lean on you, trust in you, our Lord, God, and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So if anyone wants to help, we're going to.